If you like our content, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get alerts when we introduce new videos. In this module for the IoT Controller API, we're going to specifically now look at the, how we can use the API within a rules engine to do a read. So exactly as we followed on before where we've used the command line, we now want to use the uh, rules engine that's built into the IoT Controller to now use that API and to get the same information that we've just extracted using the command line, but then bring it into a flow based programming rules engine. So when you actually look at what's integrated within the Ruckus rules within the IoT controller, we actually have integrated a full rules engine from Node Red. Now the rules engine is actually considerably more than just a, a standard or a baseline rules engine. It's more of a complete programming language. So it allows uh, integrators or programmers or developers to now start to build up more complex sets of actions based on interface and inter interconnection to the IoT controller. The rules engine itself is integrated within the IoT controller. It runs as a service uh, on the IoT controller and it has resources, memory, CPUs, etc. associated to it to actually perform the functions required by the programmer or the, uh, the systems integrator. It also includes a, a whole range of what we call safe nodes and nodes are function blocks that could be integrated and dragged and dropped into the environment to, to take specific functions or, or capabilities and integrate them within the, uh, the flow that you're developing. But it does provide a lot of advanced capability and capacity within the IoT controller to do a lot of quite complex and quite interesting programming skills and, and programming uh, capabilities. Things like the ability to develop dashboards or user interfaces are all integrated within the rules, lang lang uh, rules engine and the rules language to allow you to, to add and develop some quite complicated solutions. As I said, we, we integrate Node Red into the IoT controller. Um, now, Node Red is actually a flow based programming language that uses a number of different sub languages within it. Most of the core functionality that included are based on a Java script. So, anybody who's used to programming within Java or any of the Java script language can very easily start to develop very complex uh, applications within the, uh, within the rules or within the flow. It also includes all of the standard functions you need to communicate in and out of the rules engine. So to communicate into and out uh, to the IoT controller or to other third party applications are all integrated into the rules engine by default. And you also have the ability where you can import and export code. So if you've developed a rule or an application on another server, you're able to import that into your IoT controller and run it within the IoT environment. So within this application or within this uh, module, we're actually going to go through three main uh, examples. So the first thing is we're going to, to do an initialization. We're going to do all the authentication that's required. And then we're going to uh, read a device state from the device or and also from the IoT controller. So we're going to be doing a number of different API function reads, just as we did from the command line. But we're now going to do those within the, uh, the flow based programming rules. So as we look at our IoT controller dashboard, you can see here that we have at the top on our menu, we have our rules button. Now, in this particular case, I actually have the rules turned off. So when you click on the rules engine, you'll get nothing visible to you. So what we need to do, first of all, is to initialize the system and bring it up in, in a uh, to switch on the rules engine. So we go to, into our administration and we can see that our services for the rules engine is currently in a stopped state. So we can now go ahead and start the rules engine and after a period of time that correctly uh, informs us that the rules engine is now running. So now again we can go back to our dashboard and we can open our rules tab and you can see that we have the rules engine now running. Now because I have a blank rules there's uh, actually nothing currently available to us on the dashboard but if we go to our configuration tab we can see that we have our, our current uh, application or rule that's running. These are all disabled so we're going to open a new flow um, and we can do that by creating the add flow button here. And we now have basically a blank sheet where we can develop our, our, our application or our flow for, for developing and interfacing using the API. On the right hand side, we have information about all the nodes that are open, the debug window, which allows us to look at messages in and out and messages from our flow. And then we also have our context data, which allows us to look at global and flow variables uh, within, our, within our program that we're developing. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this window out and actually have it into a full screen. So we can do that on our, our rules dialog here by pressing the, uh, the pop out button. That will then open it into a separate window in our browser, give us a larger view. And also because some of the programming that we're about to do um, is going to refresh the tokens, that will stop us from logging out of the controller. So we now have our uh, blank flow that we can uh, look at and play with and actually do some, uh, some programming. So the first thing we want to do is we want to set up a very simple flow to initialize the IoT controller. So to do that, we're going to use an inject node. So this will uh, allow us to inject or start our flow. And we're just going to at the moment just inject a timestamp. But if we wanted to, we can actually set up a whole load of different types of uh, data that we want to inject. We can also have this inject at startup or periodically or after every second or five seconds at some pro programmable interval. The next thing we need to do is we'll need a small function block. And this function block is going to be used to set up some variables so that we communicate with the controller. The next thing node that we need is a HTTP request node. So this is going to allow us to communicate with the IoT controller. And then when the IoT controller responds with an answer, it'll allow us to feed that back to be processed. And then the next function we need is a, another function node, which will allow us to parse that data and do something with it. So now we can just join all of those up just by dragging and dropping lines between them all. So let's actually now go and, and actually prepare our flow. So the first thing we'll do is we'll open this first function node and we'll create our code that goes in here. So we have already got the code available. So what we'll do is we'll just paste this into here and we'll go through it line by line. So what we're going to do is we, the first thing we do is we set a local variable um, with the name of Riot server IP and the IP address of the server. Now, because I'm actually running this rules engine on the IoT controller, I can use the local host. So I can use the HTTPS 127001 as the local host. If I was trying to talk to an off-site or a different IOP, I, uh, IoT controller, I could use the di direct IP address of that or a uh, reverse uh, domain name lookup. The next thing we need to do is we can just send a message to the window, just telling everybody that the system has started. And then we can actually now start to format our message into the IoT controller to get our tokens. So we're going to use our message.url. We're going to talk to the IP address of the IoT controller. And we are going to append on the end of that the API function we want. So it's v1 oauth login. So all we're going to do is we're going to send a request to the IoT controller, which we are saying we want to log in to the IoT controller. The next thing we need to do is we need to set up our HTTP request. So here now we can set up, we're going to do a get request into the controller. We could put in the IP address in here if we wanted to, um, but we're actually going to, uh, to connect and we're going to be sent back some information. So we're going to set up a TLS connection and we've I've already configured this for a Ruckus IoT controller, but we can go in and configure that if we needed to. Um, so we can set up any certificates if we're using certificates or valid validation. If the certificate is being passed, we can validate that it's a valid certificate. And then the final thing we want to do is we want to set up some authentication. So we want to use basic authentication in this particular case. And then we need to set up the username and the password for the IoT controller. So our username is admin and we need to set up the password that was configured when we installed the IoT controller. And then the final thing is we want to make sure our output coming back to us is a parse JSON object. And then next we have is our next function block. So whatever comes back from the IoT controller, we need to do something with it. So we need to open that and decide what we're going to do. So we're, all we're going to do is we're going to take the incoming payload. We're looking for the access token and we're going to export it as a local variable. And we're going to do the same thing with the refresh token. So now really what we're doing is we're defining a series of variables and they will communicate with the IoT controller and we will get tokens back. So we can now go ahead and deploy this flow and we should see on our debug window. Um, if we inject this now, we should see that we get a system startup. And if we go back to our context data and I refresh it, we should now have three variables that have come in. So we have the server IP address and then we have the access and the refresh tokens. So you can see very simply that just by injecting that now we've authenticated with the controller and we're able to now get our two tokens that are needed. So that's kind of step number one. Okay, so step number two now 
is we want to do the same thing, but we want to do a refresh. We want to we want to refresh our tokens. So we know that our tokens expire about every eight hours. So we need to use our refresh token to get a new access token every eight hours. So what we'll do is we'll use another inject node. We'll use another function node. We'll use uh, we'll copy our HT. Actually, we'll put a new HTTP request node in. And we're going to need another function node to process the response. So very much similar to what we did before, but this time instead of authenticating using basic authentication, we're now going to authenticate using the token. So same principle, we're going to open our function node and we're going to put in here, but instead now of authenticating using basic authentication, we're going to use the, we're going to find the refresh token, which is defined as our, in our variable over here. And we are going to tell the IoT controller that we want to refresh our token. So we're not logging in this time. We're asking the controller to refresh the token for us. And we're now going to set up some headers as we did on the command line with an authentic authorization token. And we're going to use that token that we've uh, our refresh token that we've imported. Within our HTTP request, we need to again, we're doing a get. We need to ensure we're using TLS and we need to make sure we have a parse JSON object as our output. And then the final thing we need to do is we need to process that message when it comes in. So obviously we are now gonna get a new access token. We're not gonna get a refresh token this time, but we are gonna get a new access token. So we need to now get that incoming access token and re-export it. And while we're at it, we'll also log it out to the log file so we can see what's going on. So again, what we'll do is we will deploy this now so we can see we've re redeployed our code. And if we go back to our context data and we refresh that, hasn't changed because I haven't re-injected or reauthorized. But what I'll now do is I'll inject and re-initialize uh, the access token. So what you'll see is the access token changes, but the refresh token doesn't. So we've, there we go, we've injected our timestamp. And if we refresh that now, you'll see the access token has changed where our refresh token is exactly the same. So we can now run this periodically to get ourselves a new access token so that we communicate with the IoT controller. So what we've done so far now is we've done authentication, we've gathered tokens, access and refresh, and we've now been able to automatically update and refresh our access token as they expire. So now that we have our tokens, the next stop, step really is to start to, to communicate and do more advanced things with the API. So what we can do now is, again, we can do another inject node. We'll grab another function node. We'll do another HTTP request. And this time, we're not going to parse the output. We're just going to view the output. So what we'll do is we'll use a debug node now to view that. And again, we can connect these up. And we now have a, uh, a full configuration. So the difference now is that we need to use a slightly different structure to communicate with our uh, IoT controller. So we have our standard timestamp again. Nothing, nothing's new here. This is just being initialized whenever I, uh, I press the inject button on the input here. Then we have our function node, which is currently empty. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our code in here, which is going to give us a list of every device that's on the IoT controller. So again, we're going to read in our access token, which is this value here. We are going to also read in our IP address of our IoT controller. And then we're going to format a message. And the message is a message.url. So this is going to be sent to the next node. And this tells that node where to send the message. So it's going to send a request to the IoT controller forward slash app slash v1 slash device. So that is our API function. We're then going to create a header which is going to have our authorization of type token and we're going to attach in there our VRIA access token, this field over here. So now we have everything that we need to make a request into the IoT controller to provide a list of all devices that are on the controller. We also need to set up our HTTP request again. So again, we're doing a GET request. So we are asking the IoT controller to provide us with data. We need to set our TLS certificate and we need to provide a ask for a parsed JSON. Authentication is being done in the header. So that should be everything that we need now to get an, get an overview of every device that's in the IoT controller. So we'll clear our log, we will deploy that now. Okay, we already have our tokens, so I don't need to do anything there. And so let's look at our debug and we will now inject this message. And there we go. So we've injected our message and this is the output 
So out of our IoT controller request, we get this message. So we've received a, a, a structure with an array with two entries in it. So you can see entry zero and one. And as, as you recall from the previous module, you can now see all of that information that was shown. So we now have two entries, uh, entry zero, which is our SOTA sensor, object number one, which is our door sensor. So again, we now have the device name and we also have the device EUID as we did in the command line. So it's exactly the same as we had under the command line, but we're doing it in the flow base. So now we have the device EUID, we can now start to do some, uh, some additional things. So just as we did before, I can now modify our flow and I can append onto the end of our device API function. I can now append on the device EUID of that door sensor. So now I can see here, I append that on. And now if I deploy that message, now the, the IoT controller will respond back just with the information for that device. And again, so now you can see the message. You can see there's a lot more details in here now. So we have the LQI, we have the date it was created, device EUID, we have the connection RSSI. We can see that the device type is listed in IAS zone device. And again, we have the ZCL capability and we have the endpoint ID all of the clusters for this device are now listed so you can see each of the clusters supported by that device so for cluster 500 is the IAS zone and we can also see both commands and attributes so again the device is reporting back it has five attributes and we can open each of those in turn so we can see the zone state is the first entry the zone status is the second entry the CIE address zone type and zone id so if we open up zone one we can see the zone status and again we can go in and look at the reported value and we can see currently that door sensor is closed so again we can now trawl through that information and we can find the door status in in exactly that location so we could add a function node in here that goes and looks at the response and searches through and finds that value uh, as needed very easily with uh, with just a, a small amount of Java code that just iterates through this array looking for the correct values. So we can now actually very simply if I if I open the door sensor I can make a request again and we can go in and view that so I'll open the door sensor now and you'll see that if I request that value again we open up that uh, value 500 go to our attributes and oh that's the zone ID it's moved so the zone status you can now see the reported value is now 21 so the value has changed from 20 to 21 so exactly as we did in the command line we get the same information available to us within the within the message coming in within our rules in rules engine so just as we did before we can also make a, a request directly over the radio so as exactly as we did with the command line we can now modify our code and again, we can now append in the other parts of the message. So we can now, uh, on the end of the device EUID, we can now uh, append on the ZCL attribute command, including the cluster ID of 500, the attribute ID of 0002, and the endpoint ID of 1. Everything else is exactly the same. So what we'll do is we'll deploy that. And again, we already have the token, so we don't need to refresh any tokens. And we inject that node, and you see we get a response. So immediately you can see the reported value now is reported as 20 because I've reclosed the door sensor. And if again, if I open the door sensor and I inject that node, again, you'll see that the reported value now reports back as 21. So very simply within the programming language, you have a simple GUI interface with very, very easily well-defined structures that allow you to use the API to query at any device state um, doesn't matter what that device is, you're able to query the IoT controller and provide the information about the current state, current battery level, current information, if it provides temperature, humidity, all of the, the device's information is available to you through, that, through the, uh, the API. So that concludes our example of how to do a read using the rules engine within the IoT controller and how to, in this particular case, access a Zigbee device using the IoT controller API functionality. Thank you.